yeah, yeah, just talk and then do the introduction. And then sometimes we don't do either. And then there's like, we get 40 minutes in and we're like, hey guys, we're the Ungodly Geeks. How are you doing today? Yeah. And that's it. There we go. Podcast. There's our introduction. All right. Yeah, we're Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. I'm Joe. We're, <laughs> we're here to, uh, you know, rock talk. your socks off by talking about random uh, topics. Do you, um, do you see the story that came out? Where like the original Titanfall has around nine players worldwide, um, and they're not able to really play the game and finish the game because there's a hacker who has a mm-hmm. script that runs every time somebody logs on and just kicks them back to their desktop. Like, um, yeah, okay. Basically, there's a single hacker who is griefing Titanfall's small number of dedicated players by running a script that kicks them back <laughs> to the desktop preventing them from finishing games and like the my first thought that comes to mind is like the the incredible links that people will go through to just be dicks to other humans is sometimes really funny and this is one of those instances <laughs> just where to be an asshole. just to be an asshole like you're gonna sit there and you're gonna like take away these people's joy with this game and it's like why why are you doing this and you, you know the reason would only be because i can yeah. yeah. What strikes me is not only just why why are you going to this length, but I'm surprised the servers are still on for that game. Yeah, no, considering this is EA. Nine people. Yeah. yeah. It's EA and there's nine players on the game. It's like, this is, <laughs> what kind of dickhead is that? That's amazing. Like, I, yeah. I, the, that's the thing. Like, obviously, I don't support it. I want people to be able to enjoy everything that they can within reason as long as you're not hurting anybody as long as you're not you know harming children or whatever do whatever you want do what makes you happy and so like it's kind of like i I have to balance that with this guy's being a dick but he's doing what makes him happy for whatever reason he decides to take away these people's happiness and i i don't know he's it's weird because he's harming people but it's funny it's just weird like if he was doing this so that like if they completed these games, that the servers would finally be closed. Then I, you know, I get it. Right. I still remember when uh, the Halo Two servers went down, and there was all those players who kept playing, and that one guy who left his console on until it uh, like had a power outage just to keep it on, uh, to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. That guy, I got to admire his dedication to that. That was actually really cool of him. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, awesome. I I was sitting there reading this this article over on. Uh, pc games in which sounds like a kind of a off brand of pc gamer but yeah they're, they're mm-hmm. sitting there like that that's kind of funny um guys just what he just runs a script and kicks people off <laughs> just nope oh, game over <laughs> you're not allowed to have fun anymore not with this game which <clears throat> whatever right i mean if it was doing it for like fallout 76 <laughs> i completely understand because then he'd be doing people fucking service yeah no you know <laughs> Like, we've touched on Fallout 76 in the past and how bad it is, and, uh, you know... Or like, Anthem. <laughs> or Anthem, yeah. But, like, how, like, the Germans, GameStop Germany back, I think it was either last week or the week before, where we talked about how they were giving away Fallout 76 when you used PS4 controllers, which still yep. makes me laugh. Um, but, but this week, we it came out that Bethesda banned a player and, for the absolute ludicrous bullshit reason of having too much ammo. Yeah, they um, said that he had so much ammo that uh, he must have been cheating or using an exploit in the game. But but Even, but, but but no, Bethesda, he's played for yeah. 900 hours. 900 hours. And he claims that the amount of ammo they claim he had is wrong, that, like ludicrous. Like yeah, he didn't yeah. even have that much ammo. Yo, what no, he did he was he was trading it between two accounts. Yep. So he had a lot, and especially after playing for 900 fucking hours. Yeah, think about that. This wasteland of a game, absolute just shit game, and this guy has found one guy nine hundred plus hours of entertainment in this game that is almost unanimously hated, and and you're gonna kick him like your only actual fan, and you fuck him over by saying you can't play the game anymore because you have too much ammunition, and like the guy had a pretty I think decent reasoning. For um, wanting, like, for, for doing what he was wanting, because he was swapping guns and swapping out ammo and trying to find guns that suited him. And I think, oh, that's that's fine, right? And not only that, he had two accounts. Like, mm-hmm. what more what, what more dedication do you need saying, hey, this guy is great. He wants to play the game. And you're just like, nah, 
No, he's not allowed to play. Not allowed to play anymore. Okay. Yeah, it's just so stupid. Yeah, I... And, you know, like, that's just another thing. Like, I used to be that Bethesda apologist. I used to love Bethesda because, you know, I loved Elder Scrolls. I love I love Skyrim. I love Morrowind. I love Oblivion. I don't like Bethesda anymore after no. that, you know? And, you know, going back to... I, I know I've, I've made statements before where I've defended Bethesda by saying, oh, no, it wasn't. It was their parent company's Enemax. Um, yeah, no. Bethesda's like, just... Bethesda's been... just shit. And, like, you have to remember, and this is something I, I didn't know back then, um... ZeniMax was created by Bethesda to just hold their shit, kind of like how Alphabet was created by Google just to hold their shit. So it's like, yeah. no, Bethesda's still in charge. They're still the main company, just like Google's the main company in that instance. So, yeah, don't hate on ZeniMax. Hate on Bethesda because it's them and they fucking deserve it. Yeah. So, yeah, fuck Bethesda. <laughs> I See mean, we... <sighs> just the dumb shit that they've done and their refusal Especially when it comes to like we've talked about all the all the small glitches and things, the things that people have come up with patches for that they still leave in the same engine. Yeah, and yeah. Never I fixed. Mean, like, like I mean, playing Skyrim as much as I have, I've played it on Switch a few hundred hours. I've played it on PC. I've played it on 360. I've played the Special Edition. I've played the Legendary Edition. It's like the, the, the a lot of basic same the same basic bugs exist. In all of those, you know, yeah, and, and you would think exist that in Fallout, and yes, in Oblivion, and, and, and my, in... my thing is like you would think that when they they took the creation engine and they fixed it, and I used the air quotes there, I used the, the oh they fixed it, her, her. Um, you yeah. you would think that when they they took it that far and they they sat there and they updated it to sixty four bits so that they could uh, use what whatever uh, make it for fallout 4 or whatever um you would think they would have fixed those bugs and yep. that's what a competent developer would do not bethesda not todd howard not those guys because they're not competent and they're i mean and it shows in their work like if anybody wants to argue oh they're totally competent dude are you fucking mental have you I'm never sure... seen like their their games i'm sure if they cared um, about the players or about the quality of the product to that extent, they would be competent enough to do that. However, they don't care and they don't want to give their developers time to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if there's plenty of people on the on those teams that were like, hey, we should take the time and let's fix this. And they went, no, use the same engine, build the world, put it out. Uh, oh, we want more lighting. We want more glare effects in Fallout uh, 76. So work on that. Yeah, instead I mean, of fixing all the issues they already had, I believe wholeheartedly that they do have competent developers. I guess I should maybe backtrack on that a bit because that is a bit of a shitty thing to say. But like, yeah. I do believe that wholeheartedly they do have some competent developers, and you you know you're probably right. It's a matter of a bureaucracy just getting in the way. Like why most DC movies are terrible because bureaucracy is coming in and fucking it up. You know the the yeah. guys at WB and, and shit like that. So. I, it's I, the people like Todd Howard that want to get out the product as quickly as possible, cheaply as possible. Yeah, see, that's that's why I like uh, Miyamoto's approach to uh, to game development. He's, he's and I, I will always quote the man because it's always relevant. He's he's fucking yeah. totally right. You know, a delayed game can eventually be good, but a rushed one, a bad one, will always be bad. Yeah, it's I like that Nintendo takes that approach, and a few other developers have always taken that approach. I mean, we waited what eleven years for Breath of the Wild, you know, because they kept they kept doing this, they kept doing that, they started over, they scrapped it, they they tried various things, and, and what we got, I enjoyed, and yeah. uh, it's the same thing they're doing with Metroid Prime Four. They sat there and said, "Hey, it's in development, we're working on it, it's going well, but it's not up to our standards, so we're going to scrap the whole thing and start over." And yeah, that's, that's just that approach. But hey, we can come out with something better. Yeah, no, I, I like I like that, that approach more than. Like somebody, like when they do it too much. Yeah. Like Valve and like um, Square with the Final Fantasy games, which doesn't affect me because then I'll play them anyway. But right. their approach of, oh, we need a new engine. We're halfway through building this engine. And then, oh, we could have made it better. All right, start over. <laughs> it's like, but it's been 15 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. It's fine. Start Don't over. worry about it. We, we got <laughs> tons of money. It's fine. The fans will be fine. <laughs> but I, I'd rather them take that kind of approach than the kind of approach EA takes where they literally ship not completed games. Yeah. So well, Battlefront 2 or Anthem. 
Right. Yeah. Like no, ba- uh, yeah, Battlefront two, fucking Battlefield five, yeah. and not just incomplete. They're shipping essentially. Um, what was oh? Uh, they were. Uh, I would uh, say at best, with those, some of what I've seen, they're shipping beta versions of the game as final product. Um, and not only that, but what was it? Um, episode episodic. They're attempting to sell episodic games without being actually episodic, without releasing uh, a new, like the next game. They, yeah. They've decided, oh, well, we're just going to, the new content will come out. Uh, and, you know, they promise it's going to be free because you've already paid your 60 bucks for half a game. Right. And then the fans are, and the players are stick, stuck just sitting on their fucking thumbs waiting for more content. Well, they keep promising and promising. Meanwhile, like you said, the game is barely functional, has massive amounts of game breaking bugs, and they're asking for these bugs to be fixed while they're coming and trickling out updates to the game just to fix the fucking bugs. I mean, they've basically they've basically turned into Bethesda now, except they don't provide tools for like people like us yeah. to fix the bugs that we can fix. So it's similar. Like, it's i mean it's this is this is like this is only this is specifically ea this this like level of broken promise just whatever broken game yeah this this level of releasing and we're gonna we're gonna trickle feed more content to the game and it's just it's crazy it's it really is they set a date and they go this is when the game is releasing uh but we we won't be done with the game by then Okay, this is when the game is releasing. Basically, yeah. It's like after that, you can fix it afterwards. But you're going to fire half the staff. Yeah, but this is when the game is releasing. And half of you will then try and fix it and come up with the rest of con- the content for the game. It's like and, and all that logic and all that reasoning is just flying over their heads completely because if the full crew can't finish it by then, what the fuck yeah. do you think half the crew is going to be able to do? You know, like, and Anthem is apparently it, it's sounding like a complete nutter fucking train wreck. Yeah, um, I mean, reloading screens before you even get into the gameplay. Yep, uh, all of them exceedingly long. <laughs> it makes you feel like you're back there on like, back in like the PlayStation days where you had to sit yeah. there and literally wait for like the disc to spin and and read the data and load it into memory. It's like why you know why, like, why would you have bothered creating a massive open world game if you didn't figure out your load times like i will forgive like gta 5 yeah or when you start that game it's a long load time right but that's it that's when it. you're in yeah you're in the game runs you don't it, you don't load when you go from one district to another you don't like ha- see any stuttering while you're playing you fucking can fly around in a goddamn jet at full speed. You can go anywhere, do anything. The game is loaded. Same thing. Uh, I'm playing Crackdown Three right now. Fucking Microsoft Stealth released this goddamn thing. Um, I don't think it's it's not trash. It it feels dated, but because it's that very, it's like a, a five year old open world game. It's still yeah. fun. It's right. Still, it's it's still passable as a game. It's just it's very it's very dated in. It's the same objectives over and over, or basically do the same thing over and over. It's just lucky that it it has the mindless fun factor to keep you entertained. Right, right. But same thing. They knew that's like five, ten years ago. We knew how to make an open world game where you didn't have to sit through loading screens, and it wasn't a pain in the ass, dude. But I'm somehow, gonna, I'm going to take you back even further in time. Yeah, Jack and Daxter two on the PS two. <laughs> had no loading times you'd have like the yeah. initial loading screen but as you moved from area to area it was seamless and what they did was is they did some read ahead <clears throat> on the fucking ps2 we had yeah. no loading times in, in a I, w- I would say a semi-open world game like that so if they could figure that out uh what fucking 12 four, 13 years ago on on technology like that like why why could you guys not do that here when you consider all the powerful, like all the power the consoles have and stuff, you know, like I, I don't, I don't get it. You know, we're talking seriously. What, what, what was this? 2000, 2003, they figured yeah. that shit out. So if Naughty Dog could figure that shit out in two thousand and and three, or why could you not figure it out now? Sixteen years later, almost 
when we have like like my rig right now has been at the level of Xbox One X for like three years. Yeah. I got all this it's, power. Why can't I use it? Oh, because you fucker, sense. you don't know what you're doing. I don't know. And it's and I, it's really sad to me <clears throat> because you've got Bioware, who is a company that excels at making very story character driven games. Yeah. And it, some people, you know, love them or hate them. Um, like I love the Mass Effect series. I love the Dragon Age series. Um, they they're story driven games that have all really interesting characters. You you like they're they feel. Uh, like a team, and you know they all sure they're similar in the play style of you have the your overworld where you talk to your people and then you go on a mission with a few, do the thing, and come back, yada yada. It's it's all similar, but it's still fun. It still gives a good story when you go through and good narrative. And then EA goes and turns to them and says, "Hey, go ahead and make Destiny, uh, a Destiny clone, right. and we'll fucking sell that and we'll make a ton of money." What? No. That's not their. That's not the fucking kind of game they make. Unless you that's are not- going to say, just say like, "Hey, make a Destiny clone that's story driven." Fine, they could. They could yeah. probably pull that off. I. I feel like they really could pull that off. But like, this is not that game. This is I feel. Just not. I feel that's something like, and I. I even believe it was one of the people who worked in Bioware when they. It, actually, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was somebody who worked on an older Call of Duty. But I remember there was a, a quote back years ago where people were um, wanting this series, and I think it was a shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, they mm-hmm. were like, hey, we want this. Uh, like, hey, why not make it co-op? We want co-op. We want co-op. And the developer basically said that, you know, co-op is great. The problem is when you do a game like that, when you're doing something multiplayer, inherently the story becomes the second uh, like the like the second thing, the, yeah. The not, it's no longer important. It no longer is driven by story. And um, um, I, I got and the more multiplayer you add to it, right? It's the, the story has to take kind of a back seat. And it's it's he's not wrong. It's it's kind of you have to have a very kind of I don't know like like Borderlands is a good example. Yeah, Borderlands is not bad. Borderlands but it's two, very basic. Borderlands two is what comes to mind for me. Yeah, and Borderlands two is that peak co-op looter shooter with a, a decent story yeah like, like it's, I, it, but it's simple it's bad guy do bad things go shoot bad guy but it also gets deep enough that at the end of it if you get to the end of it and i i don't know i i don't know if i can spoil this six-year-old game now uh, but <laughs> at the end of the game you actually start to feel bad for jack and you you actually kind of you actually kind of like sort of relate to handsome jack because you know he did all that he did to keep his daughter yeah. alive you know like they did a very good job of making a very interesting character yes and having that that it's like uh jack is like um similar to vas not in the same way where you don't feel sympathy but, but no he's interesting the, you you get engaged yeah, with him and his antics and that's yeah, something that's psychopath and right and so while i do agree borderlands 2 had a very simple story the story yeah. was also well written enough that you you really do get into it. Like I know the first time I I played through it and uh, I played through it solo uh, for the most part up until a certain point um, before yeah. I started playing with you guys. Um, you know everybody involved in in our little production here, Ruga, Cody, and uh, Luke, some others. Um, before I really got into that, like I was engaged in the story. It's like, oh, this is interesting and fun. I found the humor to be great. So like, I, I think, yeah. you know, while I do agree that obviously the story is going to have to take a bit of a hit, it doesn't have to take the hit that I think that whoever you're referring to was really talking about. Right. Well, no, he's he specifically, uh, I believe in that case, it was like a call of duty narrative. Right. So you would have, um, massive uh, set piece cutscenes, right. um where in a co-op multiplayer shooter even in borderlands you don't have many of those you have very few actual cutscenes. right uh you have a couple with jack but most of the time it's driven through voice acting yep um and then the same the things you see on the screen later on when you're actually playing um specific, for him yeah like i said specifically you're talking cutscenes. um in bioware's case you're talking about a uh, very narrative driven rpg right where i can like i don't i don't can't think of a single mmo or 
even I mean co-op RPGs yes you can play it co-op but a lot of times that's just a friend jumps in and plays another character right yeah I mean that's kind of how um like Final Fantasy 9 in on the PlayStation had a feature similar to that where yeah. like you could set it up where the other player could control certain characters in battle or, or like uh, the Tales series does that right or it's um, not it's not really a it's multiplayer but it's not really a co-op story experience yeah something like that would be probably more diablo diablo yeah diablo 3 and 2 and 2 is multiplayer i believe so yeah it's and like, even then you play through diablo and it's just you fucking it's like yeah yeah shut the fuck up skip i yeah. don't give a shit like nobody pays any fucking attention to what's actually happening i yeah i know i did the i i did the first time around and i sort of did the second time around because i liked some of the voice acting but yeah, on my on my yeah. fourth playthrough, which is the playthrough that I was playing um, with you, where I think you were, uh, whatever the last time we were playing on Switch, like that was my fourth run through, and uh, I fucking skipped on all of it. I don't care. Fuck exactly. You. It's, yeah. It's pretty much you go through it the you know the time that you actually care, and then after that. It's okay. Yeah, like it, it's fine. And, it's a great story. You know, it's a good enough yeah. story, I would say. But yeah, I don't care. It's like technically, Wow has this great you know huge over. Yeah. But in general, most people are like, uh, I don't know. I just, I, I got told to go kill a thing. <laughs> which, is, which is fine. Like, let's go kill yeah. things. Like, that's the point. And you don't, that's the other thing is Bioware's very much, they're known for their choices and their, you know, their choice driven stories and their choice driven narrative. Uh, obviously, you can't have that in a fucking pseudo MMO shooter. Yeah. Yeah. Like there does this. have to be a it's limit. Just, it makes no sense. It's it. It's another case of EA going, "Hey, uh, you made a good game there. Why don't you go ahead and make this now?" Yeah. yeah. Go on. Do it. Do it's. It. I'm glad that Respawn is a company that has been able to keep themselves afloat, and thankfully EA hasn't like thrown them a fucking curveball and been like, "Hey, why don't you go make a racing game?" Even though you're a company that makes first person shooters. <laughs> yeah, yeah that in, but, like involve robots yeah that's pretty that's pretty good honestly I, I almost feel like 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 for me apex legends came out of left field and i oh with, it totally did with how nice it it seems to play um which we haven't we haven't gotten around to playing it yet but it's something we do plan on doing um yeah. it's like it, it feels like ea had nothing to do with it <laughs> like it was just uh, i'm sure going, that they what? told them we want it monetized Oh, we right. want a free to play game. We can sell loot crates and sell kin er, and sell skins and things. Right. And they right. probably went, but we want a your your thing, your Titanfall thing. But we want a um, battle uh, battle royale battle royale because it's the hot thing right now. Um, yeah, and they're like, cool. Uh, we can use our stuff. All right, and they did it. Yep. It's just like I can see this game being huge successful and shit and then ea going awesome you get to make the next star wars game uh we want it to be a fucking third person uh sci-fi action game um fucking make it have choices and in all this shit and they go um but that's that's bioware's thing no 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 don't worry about them yeah you're gonna do this now yeah. uh but we do shooters no sci-fi third person and, and in that in that regard they, they um that company was being we want morals <laughs> That, that company was being forced to use the Frostbite engine, which was made for first-person shooters, not for yeah. third-person adventure games. So that, that made it even worse. It made it even more difficult. And, uh, you know, that, that's what, I think that's part of the reason why that project got shut down, because they were working with a tool that did one thing, but EA was like, no, you got to do this other thing. It's like, Yeah, you got to use it for this, too. But, but Which I'm sure stupid. could make a beautiful game. Oh, absolutely. But actually pulling that off would have probably been insanely difficult. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. Bethesda does it with fucking Creation Engine. <laughs> That's Not all they well. fucking do. It's all they... F God. Create a new engine, assholes. Yeah, please. Seriously. No. Buy Skyrim. Now no. on the Game Boy Advance SP. <laughs> Um, um, that reminds me, did you see all the meme videos that the people were doing where they would load up the Skyrim opening video on various devices? Yes. Oh, that's man. Specifically, somebody did it on a Game Boy man. Someone also it, did it on a um, fucking old T-Mobile Nokia. I was like, oh, oh my gosh. god. Yeah, I one did. of the first ones with a color screen. <laughs> he was like, oh god. I hate it, but I love it. I can't even be mad at it. Because, you know, I, anything that I feel like we can do um and and make 
them make that a meme where we're just fucking with them. I I that I support it. Yeah, I support it. I that that meme similar to uh, the one where it tweet from and people obviously the uh, everyone from Apple or Apple fans dead digging on anyone who tweets from android yeah uh and then you see randomly like tweeted from samsung smart tv yeah <laughs> or tweeted from uh like the last one i saw was a fucking uh smart shower curtain <laughs> there uh, there used to be a website and it's very well used to be around but it's called i think it was called post it via and uh, mm-hmm. i used to use it um back when i used facebook to fuck with people like you could have it say post it from my microwave <laughs> it's like what yeah. <laughs> what are you doing how'd you do that like i don't even know man post <laughs> it from my abacus post it from my carrier pigeon like post it from my smart pigeon yeah like uh and and i'm pretty sure that website's still around but you know that that's actually an interesting thing you just brought up because mkbhd on youtube uh, one of my favorite tech reviewers he actually uh kind of just does that where he'll go around and and uh like like point at marketing campaigns that are trying to promote a product and realize, uh, oh shit, you're tweeting from the wrong thing. Like when Gal Gadot, uh, oh I remember last that. year, yeah, yeah she was, was sitting there tweeting about her Huawei, but she was tweeting from, uh, was it her Huawei? Pretty sure it was her Huawei, but she was tweeting from an iPhone or whoever was yep. managing her account was tweeting from an iPhone. And the same thing happened with I think Samsung India where they were they were tweeting about the new Samsung Galaxy S fuck whatever. And it came from Twitter for iPad. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like, I get that you you know you use those devices, whatever. You know, I don't care. But you know, if you're gonna tweet about something like that, and you're gonna do marketing campaign, maybe you should be tweeting from like the device. You know, you just my might, opinion. You might want to be. Yeah, especially when you know. Uh, Twitter shows that now on both the website and the mobile apps. Like it shows yeah. where you're tweeting from now. So, uh, whoops. Yeah. But Speaking of Twitter, that has nothing to do with Twitter at all. But I'm gonna do a fucking uh, shift here. Uh-huh. Uh, did you hear Sideways. the news that we're great at them? Yep. Uh, Reggie has retired or yeah. is retiring from yeah, Nintendo. Yeah, Reggie me is retiring from yep. Nintendo. The, the age of Reggie is at an end. It's kind of sad. I like Reggie. I yeah, loved him no, at like, E3 all these years. I mean, he's always had that that uh, that kind of stuffy corporate suit thing, but mm-hmm. you could always have that 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 sort of glimmer or that uh, just glimpse of a really cool down to earth guy underneath yeah. who does have a passion for gaming. So yeah, it kind of it's you know it's great to see that Nintendo of America is one of the only American companies. It seems like at least in the in the in, in that space. Yeah. Um that kind of has those same values that like Nintendo Japan <coughs> right. um where like uh their CEOs will take pay cuts. Yeah. Um when the company's not doing well and they actually care and they'll have fun and they'll, you know, do things like uh fucking come out and like what was it he pretended to sumo wrestle with somebody. Yep. yep. And he threw, like all the stuff that Reggie did, it's it's it, it was great. It was adorable. It was sure it was goofy and awkward, but a lot of times it was fucking funny. Not to mention that you know, like during Mario Odyssey's debut, he walked around with the fucking cappy on, like during the yep. presentations and stuff. And like, yeah, he you could tell he actually had a passion, at least to some degree, for what he did. And if mm-hmm. he didn't, and it was just all an act, well, the dude's a damn great actor. Let's get him to Hollywood and let's have him fucking acting some things. Exactly. But it's like. <laughs> Like the the person who is replacing him. That's what I, I love it. Uh, it's like the perfect fucking name, and I'm willing to bet Doug, Doug, Doug Bowser. Bowser. Yeah, they hired him <laughs> just for that name, dude. You know they fucking. Did. I don't know. I wonder if I I like I wonder if he I either changed his name when he fucking really you know got his job at Nintendo. I don't know. I don't remember where he started, but I know well, he was there. Well, he was an EA exec for a while. Um, he was an okay. EA exec beforehand for a while, and. Uh, and this right here, this is really the only reason why I, I give him any sort of leeway. Like, maybe he won't be a complete shithead. Um, mm-hmm. it, when, when I say shithead, I mean EA shithead, right? Oh, um, yeah. Because he also was an executive of Procter & Gamble. So, yeah. Cincinnati, hometown pride there a little bit. Like, oh, that's awesome. Because Procter & Gamble is based here in Cincy. 
and yeah. they make all of your household goods, so you have to deal with it. Um, yeah, they're one of like four companies that make everything. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Nestle and whatever fucking else, other mega conglomerates around the world. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, like Doug Bowser of EA and Procter & Gamble, yeah, he was their C- CEO of sales or something like that, sales and marketing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's, he's done some good things for him. So I guess that makes sense that they were going to choose him. But I, I still am almost convinced that they really did choose him on the virtue of the fact that his name is Bowser. I wonder. I don't know. I know when he was first hired at Nintendo, they did like they had like a little thing with him. Yeah. And um, the pictures come back up again now in the background. Um, there's a like Mario and Luigi dolls and they're tied up. <laughs> With a with a GameCube controller, yeah, it's like yeah, with a GameCube controller, you know, and the, and like some of the photoshops that have come out of that, because you know, obviously, uh, Bowsette is a super huge popular thing in the uh, Rule Thirty Four uh, range, and just in art in general, someone yeah. actually photoshopped his face onto Bowsette, oh, and God, then no. threw her in the picture in that picture with him saying, "Thanks for all the thing," and you see Joe fucking Mario and Luigi open. Oh God, it's it's so bad, and it's, it's horrifying. oh, it is. It really is. I saw the picture and I'm like, "Why is that a thing?" And then it's like because the internet. That's that's why it's a thing. <laughs> I wonder if he's married. They just call it, start calling his wife Bowsette. Oh, wow. That'd be funny. That would be great. Better hope she's like a blonde, because that seems to be the most popular Bowsette. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, um, I, I fucking, I love it, though. I It's it's funny. Uh, of course, it, the memes that have come out of it and all of the fan stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, and I mean, Reggie already was uh, had one of the greatest memes that are with my body is ready. Yeah. It's just I mean, he's had he's had so many memes though. Like, like, yeah. Like the dude has been an inspiration for memes before memes were memes. It's like because he took <laughs> over. He took over in what two thousand three or something like that. Some absurdly, you know, two thousand three seems to be a popular year for us on this episode. But uh, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was it was a while ago, and the guy the guy had a great run in my honest opinion. Yeah. So yeah, that's I'm, funny. I wish all the luck to him, whatever he plans on doing next. Uh, love him or hate him, he's he's done a lot of good. Uh, and uh, maybe some, some bad, but, you know, you can't you can't really be successful without making enemies and making mistakes, so. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, it's, at least it hasn't come off like some of the guys, like, uh, the head over at Activism Blizzard, mm-hmm. who, you know, will sit there and brag about all the money they've made and then let, you know, what is it, 150, 600 people? Eight hundred eight hundred eight percent of the workforce. That's what I know. That's the yeah. figure I know for sure. So you know what I'm saying. Lost their jobs. Fuck Bobby Kotick. Yeah. That fuck in general. Fuck those guys. Yeah. But fuck Bobby Kotick in in particular because he's the asshole to whom you're referring. Yeah. He's the one yeah, that went out and bragged that they've had a record year in profits and then slashed eight percent of their workforce, which I think was around eight hundred people. So yeah, fuck yeah. Bobby Kotick. Yeah, I just don't want it to say, like I don't want people to completely focus on this one guy like this is oh i can't believe they've done this no buzzfeed literally is just doing the same exact thing right now right and it's it's really shitty that that's the point we're at yeah. where making tons of money isn't enough to make money anymore but you know what uh it's gotta say fuck buzzfeed well yeah totally but i mean i still feel bad for all those people that you know uh, absolutely because i mean working for them and writing for them and then boop boop boop, boop jobs you know stuff like that has got to hurt morale too man because you sit there and oh I, i'm willing to bet a lot of those people were like long-term people people with tons of experience like they didn't just fire all the newbies right they just yeah. they just fight like they maybe they did maybe they didn't i don't know but like they just didn't fire like you fired people with families to support and and loved ones and now they can't you know they can't what are they doing you just released a bunch of people into the job market that is a very focused and and difficult to break into job market even with years of experience so it's like mm-hmm. well, what the fuck do you do you know like, i'm actually i'm glad in a way that like i mean i wish i was doing something that i had a degree in with or whatever but um because i was obviously one of those kids that went oh i want to make games for a living yeah uh, and i, I, I never too. went yeah i programming was, oh no fuck that but um it's an industry where like there's a lot of people that get in that, get a job, work on a game, and then finish the game and are immediately let go. 
fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I've, and, I've seen that happen too. Yeah, it's 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 rough. I don't remember. There was a statistic I just heard not that long ago, actually during this whole thing, that um, either they were they had more developers. Um, I think they had like some record number of more developers than were jobs available for in the gaming industry yeah. or there's like a they're at a record low of jobs needed um or people needed i mean and, and as technology gets better and better uh i i think we're gonna start seeing smaller teams yeah. and as we start better games tend to come from smaller teams where you don't have such a massive group of people that uh, too many thing you know too many hands in the cookie jar yeah or however the fuck whatever the fucking statement too many too many cooks, cooks in the, in the kitchen. kitchen yeah yeah I, it's it's fucking retarded, man. Left hand can't tell what the right hand's doing. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. But um, you know, I just feel bad. But one thing that I will give BuzzFeed credit for because this made mm-hmm. me laugh. Um, they're the ones that I heard that YouTube just demonetized anti-vax channels, and it's like, ah, yeah. yes, fuck yeah, you guys. It, it, I dislike like a lot of the opinion pieces on buzzfeed and a lot of stupid stuff but i mean they still are somebody who keeps they're, they're they'll report on things that happen yeah pretty quickly but yeah thank you youtube finally fucking taking a stand on yeah they're, like they're uh they're basically saying that such videos fall under its policy prohibiting the monetization of videos with dangerous and harmful content <laughs> that is actually really really hilarious we have strict policies that govern what videos we allow ads to appear on and videos that promote anti-vaccination content are a violation of those policies we enforce these policies vigorously and if we find a video that violates them we immediately take action and remove ads so that's that's actually kind of hilarious to me that uh you know they're, they're kind of just fixing that and it's like yes please please fix that because anti-vax are just why why mm-hmm. it it's it's so it it makes no sense mm-hmm. it, there is no evidence uh, against it there's there is no there's no nothing to stand on there. there is it is a sea of nothing yeah the guy who the um quote unquote well he's not a doctor anymore he had his no, doctor yeah he had like, his license his, revoked everything license... revoked um he they know he lied he mm-hmm. manipulated the results, and it was bad science in the first place. Yep. So there is literally nothing there. There's no evidence. There's no, oh, well, these this study shows. No, vaccines do not cause autism. No, autism Period. is a genetic trait. Like, it, it, yeah, it's not it's caused, genetic, it's not uh, caused by, by vaccines. It's caused by your shitty genes. Well, it's, it's not necessarily shitty genes, but, I mean, it's, it, it can just happen. Right. Well, the it's point I was making is just to say it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. It's your no, it's fault. Not, I, don't, I don't want to say it's their fault because I also don't want it to like it, it, this whole comparison of, oh, well, I, my kid, I uh, even even and I, I hesitate to even give any um, like anything to make it sound like, oh, they can cause autism. But even if that was the case, you would rather have your kid die of like measles, which is like a horrifying than death, possibly even have a percent chance of being autistic yeah like what Fucking really kidding me really it's just it, it it shows how shitty these people are that go well I, i'm not gonna get my kid uh, vaccinated i don't want i don't know about this is autism. no fuck you go have your kid vaccinated now okay now um, that, that leads me in, into something else that i i came across this past week and i'm not i'm not sure what i think about it i'm not sure if i believe it I don't know if this is satire or what because I've never heard of the website. Um, mm-hmm. But there, there is a there is a website, uh, MavenRoundtable.io slash the uh, intellectualist. I guess they they do news or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Fearing their dogs will develop autism, some owners are declining vaccinations. I saw that. I am just like, uh, it's really. It sounds so <laughs> much like an Onion article, but then again, I do know there are people. Yeah, have tried to force their cats and dogs to be vegans, and it's like I don't want to believe people are that fucking stupid, but god damn it, <laughs> evidence shows otherwise. I mean, yeah, like that's the thing. Like I always, I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm the eternal optimist. Maybe there's a part of me that just wants to believe that we aren't this shitty. I don't know why. I don't know what it is that that causes me to believe this or feel this way. Um. 
maybe the humanity fuck yeah in me or something. But I, I always yeah. want to believe. I always want to have some faith that um, people are are not this dumb. And that then we can be better. <laughs> that we can be better. Yeah, because I've seen I've seen evidence of us yeah. being able to be better. I've seen evidence of us being able to do more. And I I mean at this point, um, with with everything, I I don't know what to think or how to feel anymore. You know, like I've seen so much dumb shit that yeah. I go, what are we doing? Why why are we why are we doing this? Why is this a thing? You know, it's, and working in a public facing setting where I have to deal with with the, the general public um, all the time just kind of crushes that faith a little bit more every day. Because um, you sit there like part of our job responsibilities, we manage our front end, we, we refill the registers and stuff. We have our self checkout machines. You know, if you can't look at a situation, realize the lights are flashing red and there are barriers up to keep you from getting into there. If you can't look at that situation and go, hey, I don't think these are open. I'll go move on to a register that is open. You, you, what the fuck? I, what the fuck? Like, how can you not look that at that case, and figure I will it out? Say our daily job is like minor cases of just the utmost stupidity. Yeah. Doesn't matter in the grand scheme. It does. The thing that scares me and the reason that I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, that's got to be fake. Wait, probably not. Is how many times nowadays just real news is seriously makes me go, that's an onion article. That's not, <laughs> oh no, wait, nope, he actually said that or they actually did that or this actually happened. And so many times I'm like, I, I, we live in the age of satire. Yeah. We I live know. in an it, age of memes. <laughs> Like it's gotten to the, yeah it's gotten to the point where the memes have become real you know yeah. it's like uh, how do we reconcile with this you know like like how do we how do we fix this I, I wish I could remember who it was if it was South Park uh, the the writers on South Park Family Guy or Simpsons or some one of those shows I'm pretty sure it was South Park because I think I know what you're going for where they said that at this point. We don't even we can't even satirize things because everything becomes so fucked up. Yeah, it was something like they said something like that. I mean, they're still trying, but they said it's it's real life has become so much like the our, satire. Our show. Yeah, the satire that they've been writing for years. It's like yeah. how do how do we how do we fix this? And I don't think we yeah. can. Not right now. Yeah, not with what we have available, it's going to take a very long time to fix it. You know, it's it's very weird that like. The internet as a tool is one of the most powerful things humanity has ever created for the spreading of information and um, like literally anything. You can learn to fix things. You can learn uh, what's happening across the world. You, just learning in general. Yep. However, at the same time, it's also the most devastating, horrible thing to actual fact and learning and anything people get trapped in, in, in for many reasons fake news um false information being spread uh like we mentioned the fucking anti-vaxxers um on top of people just being stuck in their own echo chambers and all they hear is their own shit and then they go out and they ref nowadays people just refuse to hear other sides they push and push and try and silence people to the point where the, that side, it gets – the other side gets stronger and becomes um, active, becomes more – it just grows and it's like it, – it's just feeding into both sides of this giant mess and no one wants to fucking have a dialogue. No, just, just dialogues are, are dangerous because it doesn't fit my narrative and I don't want to hear it. Exactly. I can't yeah. – la, 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 don't – I don't want to hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. No. Fucking, we can't come to any type of agreement or anything anymore. Yeah, the there's, 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 there's no compromise, it seems. There's yeah. no difference of opinion. There's no... And it's I, crazy. The one good thing I will say is, in general, though, when you go out into the world and talk and actually interact with people, that's not the case. Yeah. I don't feel that in most, in, in, in most places. It's just that's the narrative everybody is being fed and not just from the Internet, but also the news, of course, because conflict and bad news sells. Yep. So that's what's promoted all the time. And it, it, everyone looks and goes, oh, my God, the whole world's going to end instead of, you know, 
still, you can go out and have a conversation with somebody and fucking talk things out. Like, that's the thing, man. And, and, and we've dealt with this before. We've had, we've had our share of friends. I can disagree with you on a topic and it not be a personal attack against you. You know, like exactly. you don't, you don't have to take that personally. I just don't, I don't feel the way you do about a thing. That, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with us having a difference of opinion. Why are you treating it like a personal attack? I don't understand. Why are you getting so mad because I don't like a band that you like? Yeah, unless you like episode eight. Right. And, and, and no, we have, no, I'm kidding. We, you're, <laughs> dead you're dead to us. To you're dead to us if you I like just, that. It, it, I will just know that you're not someone that I can go and we probably aren't going to have the same taste in movies and things. I'm not, you know, it doesn't probably mean I'm going to have good you taste off as a human in food being. either. So. Possibly. Yeah. Um, no, I, just, I don't know, man. I just, I don't get it. Like, yeah, whatever, I, right? I, I okay, think... let's move on. Let's move on from this because we've soapboxed enough again, right? Because ah. <laughs> we did it again. Uh, we totally did it we again. Uh, uh, oh, I did something awesome yesterday. I went and saw uh, uh, Alita Battle Angel. Yeah, Alita Battle Angel. I have not seen it yet because yeah. I was unaware that it was released and it's also, I don't I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's just understandable. I, uh, I actually was a really big fan of the anime years ago I saw it. Um, one of the, I, I still remember like after obviously Dragon Ball Z and, uh, all the adult swim tsunami type anime yeah. watching all of that. Right. Where I was like, I want to see some other stuff. Uh, and the only other source I had was when sci-fi used to do this late at night anime stuff. Right. And then hearing about Alita Battle Angel and, um, uh, one other one that I can't think of the top of my head but it's one that i went got watched and was fucking blown away it's great it's an amazing story it's fucking awesome uh like cyborg fighting stuff and then the movie was announced uh james cameron producing it it's his it's like um special effects studio he he wanted to do it like apparently like he, he yeah really oh yeah wanted to do it. for years he's wanted to do it apparently the only reason he didn't direct it is because he's been so focused on his 19 avatar sequels which by the way we don't, we don't need that <laughs> we, i uh, i will speak for at least myself and seven other people we don't need that <laughs> i a highest grossing movie in the world uh, in, in history so it's hard to say there shouldn't be a sequel but it's been a long time so i i think it's i think it's not i i mean Unless it comes out and he's like, by the way, I've invented this new technology that will allow you to watch 3D in your minds, crazy shit like that. Yeah. I don't think it's going to blow people away the same way. Um, you see, like something like uh, make you let you experience it like you would in something like uh, what is that uh, in the in Assassin's Creed? Uh, oh, uh, uh, the um, Animus. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah, like, like if, make it, it like everyone had fine. an Oculus Rift or something. But no, yeah, like an Animus whole body like, immersion yeah like that okay fine i will 100 percent be watch your cat people movie that way like because yeah. that's amazing to me but i no dude i don't care um but this movie you know the, you know what the funny thing also is the 3d the 3d phase is done i, I don't know but yeah um one uh, of the things is that i didn't i didn't like i i, I didn't pay much attention to this um but it came yeah. i guess it came out on valentine's day um, and mm. I'm kind of kicking myself for this because T-Mobile, uh, who is my carrier, and no, I'm not shilling for T-Mobile. Do whatever you use. Fuck if cares. they want to sponsor us, though. I mean, yeah, they want to like give me a couple months of free service. Fine. Um, but uh, they were actually giving away fucking like movie tickets to the movie last Tuesday. And I'm like, oh, well, fuck. I could oh, have had, or maybe it was this past Tuesday. I'm like, well, shit, I could have gone and seen it for free. But I wasn't paying any real attention because I've got so much personal shit going on right now that I barely have time to do this. So yeah, I wish I would have noticed. I would have seen it for free. But I went to a matinee, so it wasn't too expensive. It was like six bucks, right? So it's not yeah. even that bad. Like there have been plenty of movies that I'm glad I only played matinee prices for. So lots, yeah. Plus, yeah. I actually enjoy now going to movies during matinee mm. when it's pretty much there's nobody there. You just go and sit and enjoy it and go alone, whatever. Uh, it's it's like i like that it's fun yeah yeah great I'm um, totally down so like i said uh loved the anime movie comes out and it's actually fucking great it's an anime adaptation that fucking lives up to um the original anime at I, least in my opinion 
It's got a 54% on Metacritic and 59% on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but it's got a 7.6 out of 10 on IMDb. And something that's really nice is of all the Google users who have voted for this movie, 95% of them have liked it. And, um, it's like a lot of the audience reviews are giving it so much better reviews than the critics. So I've gotten to a point where I've stopped caring about critic reviews because they've, they've reviewed movies like episode eight was like, God, this is awful. But then there were people saying, Oh, it's the best movie ever. Like, no, it's fucking terrible. How dare um, you? I'm still on the fence with that because critics also had have panned the Transformers movies, which I completely agree. And then audiences are like, no, it's great, man. It's well, Michael yeah. Bay, boom explosions, 98%. <laughs> boob explosions. I would be down for boob explosions. <laughs> give, me, give me boob explosions. Because um, would it be like boobs exploding or would it be explosions of boobs? Like, you know, what's what's we doing here? Um, that's okay though. Alita Battle Angel was made on two hundred million dollars, but uh, it looks like it's gonna probably earn its money back in at least China. So we might we might get uh, we might get more of this. It might be kind of shut neat. up. Okay, I'm sorry. My bad, Luke. Damn. I, I, I tried to mute my mic. You did not mute your mic at all. <laughs> no, I think I clicked it off and clicked it back on. What you just heard was Luke yelling at his grandma or his dogs. One of the two. Both. I'll think about it, but it's funny, so I might keep it in. <laughs> um, uh, but also, you shut up. No. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> you know, I can mute you. <laughs> uh, I didn't. Um, so yeah, I I I'll probably go and see it on my own. I've got some off days coming up, as in my normal two days off where I don't do a fucking thing, and uh, I might I might go and, and yeah. see it. I mean, it's one of those movies that it's I don't know. I liked it. I I, I liked the story a lot. Um, the action act like completely blew me away. Yeah, the actions and sequences in this movie just leave you wanting more because they're done so unbelievably well. Um, this is like what Michael Bay wishes he could do with the Transformers series. They are, it, it's, it looks fucking great. Uh, you can follow what's happening. It's, it's not just super fast, un, like, uh, unrecognizable. So I'm, I'm going to ask CGI you fest. two questions. It's not yeah. a, a bunch of jump cuts. I'll take taken three. No. Or B, it's not a bunch of just fucking absolute mess. a la venom. No, it's not. It's not that CGI flat bullshit like Venom and the Transformers movies and a lot of other movies that heavily rely on CGI. This movie's fucking gorgeous. Um, it's it, it really does. There's there's still quite a bit of that almost uncanny valley, um, but you don't. It, it's it almost it does kind of start going away with, uh, with uh, like characters like Alita yeah. and a lot of the other um, cyborgs. There's some like they have some fucking crazy like where it's a human head on a fucking giant tank forearmed robot body, but it just fucking works. It you know, looks I gotta awesome. say that actually sounds pretty metal. So <laughs> oh, it's metal is fine fun. with that. <laughs> There's this whole uh, like thing about them. Uh, I can't remember what the sports rollerball or something like that. Yeah, where it's this extreme violent sport where I don't know why they even have the ball in a point system. When all it ends up being is a bunch of cyborgs tearing each other apart while racing down a track. <laughs> you might as well take the ball away and just have it be a fucking death thing. Just do Mario but, Kart with, with, with robots. So. Yeah, cyborgs, uh, whatever. Uh, more like a uh, fucking Twisted or, Metal. Yeah, I was going to say Twisted Metal <laughs> or Vigilante 8, you know, like. <laughs> Twisted Metal, but they're playing soccer. <laughs> <laughs> so Twisted it's Metal kind of... meets uh, Rocket League. What's that? Uh, what's that sport that? Uh, a lot of women play that roller derby. Yeah, roller derby. It's like derby. roller derby with a ball, and I don't think roller derby has a ball. I, I could have, be wrong. I don't. I, I, don't I gotta be perfectly honest with you. I have no idea. Um, that's that's what I see as the inspiration because that's kind of the way it's set up. Where they're all and, and I don't know. There must be no rules on weapons or what you can and can't do because they're like I said. Some of them are full on fucking four-armed, treaded tank monsters. Meanwhile, others are like slick, sleek, um, really dexterous builds where they like can, you know, jump and fling and are still, obviously, they're cyborgs, so they're strong, but they're like, it's like <laughs> there's no, they're so vastly different. It's it's kind of crazy, but hey, like I said, action's fucking good, story's not bad. 
Um, some of the stuff they added to it, I didn't mind. Uh, it, I had to go back and watch the anime because there were a few things that I, especially the ending, changed the ending a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not going to spoil. But I had to go back and watch because I was like, I don't remember this happening. Uh, and turns out I was right. It didn't happen in the anime. It cuts off a little bit um, earlier. Right. But I, I liked I liked the ending. I liked what they changed. Um, I don't know. It was, uh, like I said, overall, I, I'd give it like a 75, maybe an 80. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, you know, you can see it matinee. Fucking, if you want, wait for it to come out, rent it, something like that. It was definitely entertaining. It, it was way better than I expected. Yeah. Because I think we're end on it. I, I um, think, yeah, I think I might go and, and probably see it matinee because, just because... I like to sleep, so I'll probably sleep and then get up and go see it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Sleeping the is cast amazing. Great too. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good, yeah, man. Definitely. That sounds great. Let's go, everybody. Just go see it. Why not? Go check it out. Uh, what I mean, do you have to lose? You know, Two hours. If it and doesn't five bucks. make its money back in China, it's gonna be a huge fucking flop. <laughs> Apparently, it's already like trending towards making sixty million dollars or or so. Um, because on Friday alone, it made twenty million. So in China, yeah, in China. So I'm okay, sure, good, I'm sure yeah, it'll do fine. Yeah, um, it, I, I don't have US, any. I don't have any like. Yeah, in U.S. has only made thirty two million so far, but in in China, it's already made twenty million in, in just just yesterday, basically. And so mm -hmm. it's. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, well, we talked about this. Um, I I still, even though I like I said I enjoyed the anime and I like this movie. I do not know why, other than it seems like a passion project. Mm -hmm. um, this is not something you would ex I would expect to see ad ad adapted. There's not really a built-in base yeah. for this. I'm sure there's there's yeah, a mean, lot of people who are fans of it. It's not, like, but it's, it's not like, like Akira, or, uh, where or like you said, has uh, huge name recognition. Or you use another example uh, while we were at work. Um, New, uh, Naruto or uh, Dragon, Ball Dragon Ball Z. Ball Z. Like I think One Piece could probably you know make that yeah. but just on name recognition alone because everybody knows one piece but it's like yeah. yeah i i i had honestly never heard of alita battle angel until people started talking about this movie and throwing up these screenshots yeah. of this weird brown-eyed girl with huge fucking eyes and i'm just, just like huge fucking eyes i'm like all right that looks weird and a little bit creepy and now it's like Oh well, I might go watch this movie now just because someone I know who I have similar tastes in movies with said, "Hey, it's, I liked it. It was pretty good." I'm like, "All right, yeah. I don't have any fucking thing to do." I mean, it's got Christopher Waltz, Marshall, uh, um, the Marsh, Marsh Marshall, Marshall Ali, Marshall Ali. I I love that That's dude. It. He's it's, the reason I'm going to be watching True actor. Detective. Like, I I watched Moonlight because he was in it. Like, aside from it being winning the awards it did and be everyone saying it's a great fucking movie i mean he was one of the reasons that i, I would watch it because i don't think i'm the target audience for something like that but i thoroughly enjoyed moonlight so mm -hmm. and i, I will yeah. sing that movie's praises Please. whenever i can because it deserves it it really does oh yeah and uh he's in another this year don't have seen it don't even remember what the name of it is but go marshall Ali. Yeah, it's like you, you hear his name for me. He's like Idris Elba. If he's in it, I'll just watch it just, just because. Because, I mean, he, he really did captivate the fuck out of me as uh, Cottonmouth in um, of the fucking oh, Luke Cage. Oh, the first season of Luke Cage, yeah. Yeah, like he just, I dude, he hacked that so well. And then, like, for me to go from there, it's something like Moonlight, where he's still in a similar role as, like, a drug dealer or a drug pusher, but it's completely fucking flip-flopped. Like, oh, I loved it. Like, and uh, it, 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 I don't know. I'm going to have to, uh, like I said, I'm going to have to watch True Detective. Cause he, he's oh my God, it. I didn't realize fucking Casper Van Dien was in this movie. <laughs> Who? Casper Van Dien is the uh, lead actor from Starship Troopers. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> he's uh, he's one of my favorites, like smaller. He never, it never hit it big after those movies, but he's in a lot of small little like uh kind of like silly flicks and stuff like B yeah movies, movies you're fun. not watching because it's going to be amazing but uh no he's in some interesting stuff it's going to be just so bad I loved it's, gonna, it's one of those movies where it's so bad it's good type stuff or yeah, yeah nice exactly yeah he's yeah. in a lot of that i mean i love those kinds of movies because some of them are like, like the room when we watched the room that was so bad it was oh, i couldn't help but enjoy it and i hated myself afterwards i felt dirty because mm -hmm. like i don't know why i enjoyed this but i did and fuck and <laughs> <laughs> that's all it was man 
And the site we watched it on was so damn sketchy. <laughs> oh god, I loved that it. Was fun. Yeah, that was good. We should we should we should look into doing that uh, with another movie soon. Mm-hmm. So, all right, I I I gotta be honest with you. I really have to piss, so I think we should wind this down and uh, cut this episode off. There. Yeah. Yep. So I hope you guys enjoyed us. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed us just blabbering for an hour or however this, how long this ends up being. I actually have no idea until I cut it. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Zero fucking clue how long it actually ends up being because, you know, I got to cut some time off the front and I got to compress the thing and I got to cut the silence out where we had awkward pauses. Although I think I'm going to uh, do that manually this time around so I can keep the pauses where you just yell, shut up. (laughs) Cause that, <laughs> shut the fuck up it just, god damn it cause it was like a, a full like two seconds of just silence like alright <laughs> I was but, like wait I think that went through the mic <laughs> that totally did and it I, it's staying in but it's fucking hilarious um, but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed us you know if you if you want to help us out uh, get your name and credits of our videos uh, on our credits mm-hmm. page uh, discord rewards our eternal gratitude and maybe some nipple pictures um go ahead and get on patreon give us a buck on godly geeks everywhere we are twitter instagram yep. facebook whatever um we do a lot I, I i do most of the posting on the twitter account i'm not sure what luke does with the facebook account anymore but uh i've barely touched it i i <laughs> kind of completely hate facebook with a passion so it's like I keep not doing anything with it. <laughs> I, see, I I deleted my Facebook account back in like June or something yeah. like that. So I'm I'm done with Facebook. Um, but you know, hey, you still catch us on Twitter. Still, Twitter's still huge, and we we I tweet a bunch of random dumb shit memes and cool mm-hmm. screenshots and uh, just this things in general. And I'm always responsive. You want to fucking yell at me and, and call me a honky? Do it, man. Do it. Fucking do it. Um, but white you know, devil, white, devil, white, devil. white devil. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, blue eyed white devil. You know, if we can't take something, we'll burn it. If we can't burn it, we'll fuck it. So um, for the ungodly geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. See ya. Fuck yeah. <laughs>